brown families. And that was quite a ceremony. And it was alcohol. <laughs> 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 so this, um, we're given five to seven minutes, and I think we all went over a little bit. And it's, it's um, we're talking about what we said we were gonna talk about, but we really want to say so much more. But I'm talking about the uh, Alvina Castle, which officially is St. George's Castle, but everybody knows it as Alvina Castle. And it was the first slave castle on the Gulf Coast, and it was built by the Portuguese. So before the castle, of course, the ind indigenous people were living their lives, they were doing trade, they were dealing with each other in their villages. They had their own way of life, and it was a good life. Um, didn't have any problems. Then the Portuguese showed up. And of course, they had been on the coast and up and down uh, before, but they had their eye on going to Elmina and building this castle. They swore they weren't gonna deal with slavery. They just wanted to deal with ivory and gold, et cetera, because they noticed all the gold on the Gold Coast. So they got there, things got good in slave trade. They got greedy. They took this castle that they were storing their guns and gunpowder and corn and other supplies. They moved all that out and they turned those spaces into slave dungeons. Now you know, you don't need windows if you're, you're storing corn and gunpowder. You don't need windows, just need a door, maybe a little ventilation to keep your gunpowder fresh. But that's where they put the slaves, in those dungeons with no windows, a door that they locked, of course, when they put them in. And, um, and they had to survive with that. I'm really gonna go quickly because the Dutch came along and they picked it up. They, they fought with the Portuguese, they won, they did their thing. The British came along, oh, there's some vicious sucks. The, um, the British wanted to do everything, they wanted it all. They, they thought they ought to be sitting in the big seats. And at some point, they made a proposition and the king said, no way. So they burned the city down. They burned that sucker down. So people had to move. So the, the ones who were wealthy, they could go off coast, start all over again. The ones who weren't, they just went right over the hill and lived in tents on the ground or whatever they could find. And we we'll go all the way up to independence here. But there was so much stuff that happened in between. So these people were merchants. They traded gold and metal. <coughs> They were situated in Fonte kingdoms, and family was very important to them. As a matter of fact, family is still important to them. But boy, when those Europeans got here, they turned it around. I'm gonna skip over this because I, I talked about most of that. This right here, and my M jumped off. But anyway, this piece right here, when we walked into the museum, on the site of the castle was the museum. We saw this, and it pretty much angered us. I, I left immediately, I took a couple of pictures, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm getting out of here. Because they're claiming, now, they're playing to their base, y'all know what that means, right? They're playing to their base, they're playing to the people who put money into the museum. Because they're claiming that these people probably weren't doing the doggone thing until they showed up with some modern technology and taught them how to work. So this really takes us all in. One of, um, Bob, 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 I pronounce his name, Bob Adela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Bob Adela, who was with us, he really went over the top on it. Uh, it was a, not the place to go over the top, but he did, because the information is incorrect, and we don't know how to fix it, but they're dealing with the people who come to their institution pump money in, and it's not going to change. So here's a look at the castle. And down at the bottom, you, you really can't tell from here, but I do have some other um, slides. Down at the bottom, that's where they threw the men. The women were up on, on another low level, and I call it a mezzanine, because on the second floor, that's where the 
the governor's people or his friends and his second in command, but he was up at the top where he could have parties, he could look down on the courtyard and pick a slave of the day to come up to his place. We'll get back to that one. The, um, all my stuff moved, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I was hustling to get a paper out, which I'm still not finished. So I, I really did this in a hurry. And it was there before. But it says so close yet, so far away. And this is looking out from the castle. And they couldn't see this because they didn't have any windows. But they were this close to the water. And I understand it might have been even closer than they've done some building, putting in some more uh, soil. So in the castle, what? No toilets, no access to water. And every three months, they're circulating some more people in there. So where, what are they doing? They're urinating on the floor, they're defecating. Women having their menses, that's on the floor. The, um, there's no way for it to come out. So they were getting sick on top of the illnesses that were already there. Some of them were old, so they were dying anyway. And if you were troubled, they'd send you off to another little room to die. And it's actually another cell. The women were raped at the governor's will, and that's the one I said I'd get back to. The um, the governor would come in on his balcony. He had the slaves all lined up, and he picked one. And the one he picked, they would take to. There was a trap door in the ground that kept kept uh, rainwater. They would take her down there and clean her up, and set her up a trap door, up a stairway through a trap door up to his quarters so he could have his way with her. Now, those who were a little honorary and they decided, I'm just not going, well, they got punished. And outside, they would chain them to these cannonballs that were like 55 pounds. And they would not feed them, they would not give them water. And that was supposed to be an example to the rest of them. When we come for you, let's go. Let's go on upstairs. This is where the females were. The males were downstairs. This little chute right here, this is the male nut downstairs. This little chute is upstairs. And when the women's, when the floors would overflow, would go through this little chute, and guess where it went? Right down in the men's dungeon. So they had their own refuse to deal with. Now they had to deal with the stuff that was coming from upstairs. Very unsanitary conditions. We're gonna skip over the Dutch, okay? Because I, I really want to get to the um, I want to get to the last bath. So anyway, the door of no return. We all heard about the door of no return. They would take them through this door. They would get a chance to breathe the fresh air before they went to the bowels of these slave ships in these configurations where sometimes they were laying 10 inches. Imagine, imagine laying on your back 10 inches from something over you. And that's how they had to remain for months. Anywhere from four weeks to three months, they were there on their backs. And if they died, they were just there. They couldn't pull them out. So they make the whole voyage there. And this one, you can see how, so this one shows you the man standing next to it, that they had to crouch down to get through the door to get out. Some of them very weak. Now this woman right here, Grandma, Ya Asantua. Things got really rough, and, and the British wanted that doggone golden stool. Y'all see the golden stool over here. Now, this, this represents the spirits, all the spirits and souls of the people, the ancestors, rather. So it's very, very special. And they, was, they were putting so much pressure on the kings in the different villages that they were talking about, well, maybe we ought to just give them the golden stool, stool and let's get it over with. And y'all sent to us got up and she said, wait a minute, hold on. If you guys can't stand up and fight, you might as well turn your loincloths in 
for my underwear because this is not going to work. So she gave them some ultimatums. The women got on her side. The women stopped sleeping with the men. They stopped cooking for them, so you don't know how y'all act. <laughs> and, so, and so they came around. They told her, okay, you can lead the war. So she led the Civil War, and she won. But at some point, she and the king, you know, they brought, they brought in the big gun. So she and the king were in trouble. They sent the king, they exiled him to Seychelles, and um, her as well. But before they sent them away, they locked them up in the castle, in, in there where they put all the folk who are, are angry and fighting for their lives, right next to the people who, the unruly soldiers, you know, they, they, could, they could breathe, they had rooms, they had windows. So, the Dutch abolished slavery in 1863. The Abolition, uh, Abolition Act of 1807 told Brits, don't do this no more, you can't sell slaves here in Africa. But they continued to do the, the uh, slave trade until 1830.